What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Conor McGregor removed from UFC rankings. Former two-division UFC champion Conor McGregor has been out of competition since his horrific injury against Dustin Poirier at UFC 264 last year. In recent weeks, there's been tremendous confusion regarding his current status, as well as his path to return to the octagon. After McGregor said that he would use an exemption to bypass the six-month testing period required by the UFC before then taking two tests in February, he was quickly informed by USADA that an exemption likely wouldn't apply. With no clear timeline for when the Irish superstar wants to return to the octagon, he's officially been removed from the UFC's rankings. This marks the first time McGregor has fallen out of the rankings since his debut in 2013, when he wrestled his way to a win over Max Holloway while injured. After the win, McGregor found himself as the 12th ranked featherweight the following Monday when rankings were released. At the time, he managed a pretty quick turnaround, largely in part to inspiration he took from Kobe Bryant, who rehabbed his torn Achilles at the same facility McGregor did his rehab. After he returned from the injury just 11 months later, he knocked out Diego Brandao in the main event of UFC Fight Night Dublin, and the rest, as they say, is history. So far, McGregor has yet to react to the news, however, he was recently taking shots at Dustin Poirier, who has been battling a pretty nasty staph infection himself. Despite McGregor being out of the USADA testing pool, UFC President Dana White recently revealed that McGregor's first fight back would likely be against Michael Chandler. If the fight is made official, who do you think gets the win here? Jared Gordon opens up on controversial loss to Patty Pimblett. At UFC 282, Jared Gordon was on the wrong end of what many believe to be the worst decision in recent memory. After a fight where the overwhelming majority of viewers scored the fight in his favor, Gordon saw Patty Pimblett's hand raised. During the post-fight press conference, UFC President Dana White then went on to say that Gordon essentially threw away the final round of the fight by coasting, thinking he was ahead on the scorecards. Something Patty Pimblett quite literally said he did during his post-fight Octagon interview. With so much controversy surrounding Judge Douglas Crosby, Gordon spoke this week to discuss the situation, explaining that the loss was heartbreaking. Although he admits that viewers at home may be watching the fight different from how it's playing out in his head, he still believes he won the fight. So I clearly controlled the third. He didn't, you know, they, uh, people said like, oh, you didn't do anything in the third round. But Dana said it. And then looking back at it, I still regret what I did in the third round. So I'm not, I think um, I agree with people that I could have done more, but I still controlled the whole third round. Mm -hmm. I was the one whole, you know, he didn't, if I didn't do anything, he did absolutely nothing. Right. In the third round just lay there and was throwing shots like this behind my ear, you know, around my head. How do I lose that round? As he revealed during this interview, he suffered a pretty bad ankle injury in the first round, something that could very well sideline him for a while following the event and prevent him from making a quick turnaround in the hopes of returning to the win column. So far, no UFC 282 medical suspensions have been released yet. Stay tuned for updates as they become available, and give us your thoughts on the controversial decision in the comments below. Israel Adesanya offers advice to Darren Till following recent loss. This past weekend, Darren Till made his highly anticipated return to the Octagon, where he dropped a tough loss to Drakus Duplessis. In the first round, Till couldn't seem to get going, eating dozens of unanswered punches against the cage early on. In the second, he began to hit his stride, landing a variety of strikes on the feet as Duplessis appeared to be fading. With Till winning the second round on all three judges' scorecards, it was clear he needed to continue his success in the third if he wanted to win after two judges scored the first round as a 10-8. When the pair came out for the third, it was Duplessis who went to work, earning a submission win that extended Till's losing streak to three. With that latest loss, Till has now gone winless since 2019, when he picked up a split decision victory over Kelvin Gastelum in his middleweight debut. Former middleweight kingpin Israel Adesanya, who was watching the fight and giving his analysis as part of a YouTube video, offered some advice to Till. In the second round, the gorilla managed to land elbows on Duplessis. In the third, however, Adesanya noticed that Till seemed unaware of Duplessis waiting to counter the elbow with a takedown of his own that ultimately secured him the win. Nah, he, he did the same thing. The guy blissed, he went the elbow, and then he just knew because the guy already got eight the elbow how many times, so he, he shot in the middle. Look, look at the elbow, look, I, the guy knows, okay, whoop. Yeah. Don't do the same thing over and over again. Following the fight, a clearly frustrated Till informed fans via social media that he wasn't retiring, despite what many online were predicting. Although he wants to take the rest of the year to spend Christmas with his family, 
Till plans to return to the Octagon next year. Before we continue, make sure you give that like button some love and be sure to subscribe to the MMA Zone for all of the latest news. Sean Strickland admits he has no game plan for Jared Cannonier. With Jared Cannonier and Sean Strickland set to face off in a highly anticipated showdown this weekend at the UFC Apex, fight fans are eager to find out how both men bounce back from their recent losses. Cannonier, who had a two-fight win streak snapped by Israel Adesanya at UFC 276 back in July, is eagerly awaiting his chance to return to the win column and begin another run at the UFC middleweight title. Standing in his way, however, is the outspoken Sean Strickland, who's attempting to bounce back from a vicious KO loss to Alex Pereira at UFC 276. Ahead of the upcoming fight with Cannoneer, Strickland spoke about his game plan for the fight, or lack thereof. During a media day, he revealed that he planned to take things as they come, rather than try to force one area of his game. As a well-rounded fighter who has competed across two divisions in his career, Strickland has pretty much seen it all inside the cage. Maybe I'll take him down. Maybe I kickbox. Maybe I box. Who fuck? I don't even know these things. You're asking me. You're asking questions of things that I haven't even thought about yet. The stakes are going to be incredibly high for both men. With Israel Adesanya no longer at the top of the division, there's plenty of room for new contenders to emerge and make a run at the title. When Strickland and Cannoneer clash this weekend, who do you think leaves the apex one step closer to a crack at the 185 pound title? Give us your thoughts in the comments section below. And now for our breaking news story of the day. Sean O'Malley weighs in on controversial Patty Pimblett versus Jared Gordon fight. Sean O'Malley hopes UFC 282 was a wake-up call for Patty Pimblett. Although the Scouser has no doubts about his victory over Jared Gordon, Sugar Sean thinks the fight will motivate Pimblett to take the jump to the next level. Given how close the fight was, O'Malley thinks that Pimblett will dial it in given that he wants to continue to tear through his opponents in the future like he did when he first stepped into the octagon. Yeah, I bet Patty takes away from that fight and goes, okay, I need to f dial in. This is, this is the time where I need to dial in, not get fat as f and get skilled get more skilled because he has skills yeah. he knows how to perform he's not bad no he can has a lot of potential just needs to which where is he going to direct his energy is he going to get better is he going to get fatter we'll see I, pimblet's weight has been a constant source of debate since he joined the ufc between fights pimblet will admittedly get up as high as 200 pounds featherweight champion alexander volkanovsky has previously explained that amount of weight cutting could be detrimental to the longevity of his career at the same time ufc president dana white didn't shy away from touching on how the baddies weight gain between fights impacts the ufc as well as white explained at the time the promotion is unable to book pimblet for short notice fights given that it'll take him a considerable amount of time to make 155 pounds for his part Pimblet has hired a nutritionist to help him with the Herculean 50 pound weight cut. Many have continued to point out that Pimblet has managed to make weight for all of his UFC fights. The only time he's missed weight during his career was when he competed at Bantamweight for Cage Warriors and missed the 135 pound weight limit. Do you think the win over Gordon will make Pimblet take his training to the next level? Sound off below. Thank you so much for joining us today. What do you make of what's going on in the fight world? Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all the latest news from the MMA Zone. See you next time!